then at 6.32, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we will reconvene the public session and begin with attendance. And by way of roll call, I will simply note that the trustees are present. Lou Stoltz is not present. And we're still waiting for Juliet, our student trustee. That's there. Okay. And I'll read the modified public comment announcement. Uh, we are streaming recording this meeting through the college's YouTube channel, and it will be available to view after this meeting and also is available as a public record upon request. The notification went out prior to the meeting, and those who wish to participate could submit their comments electronically by emailing Patty McClure ahead of time. Submissions will be read aloud now and must comply with five-minute time limit per board policy 2350. Supposed to read these now or They're item on 10? Agenda items, correct. Yeah, so so actually I will read those at item 10.1. So uh, let's move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Place your hand over your heart. Begin with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic which stands one nation indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, we'll move on to item nine of the meeting agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. On to item 10, which is open forum on non-agenda items. Uh, I do have several comments, which I will read in the order in which they were received, I believe. So, uh, comment one. I am a member of the CMS. This is uh, Rochelle Hightower, Hightower Stickle. I'm a member of the CMS and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16th. And from Tina McDermott. I'm a member of the faculty and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I request that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16th so that there is more time to consider the responses before a decision is made. And Carla Corona, I'm a member of the faculty and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16th. Heidi Williams, I'm a member of the faculty and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16. Sandra Cooley, I'm a member of the CMSA constituency group and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16. Tino Garcia, I'm a member of the faculty and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16. Uh, Lisa Carlstein, I'm a member of the Arts and Humanities Division Chair of Visual Arts and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due to the 16th. Crystal Garcia, I'm a member of the Classified Union and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due to the 16th. Desiree Lee, I'm a member of the ABC Classified Union and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16. Jasmine Garcia, I'm a member of the Classified Union and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. 
I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16. Tamara Palmetto de Spain, I am a faculty member at ABC and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16. Jamal Brown, I'm a member of the Classified Union and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16th. Um, Cole McCandless, um, hello as faculty member and EEO rep. I'd like to share my concerns during public comment regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16th. Uh, Karina Giorgi. Um, I, Dr. Karina uh, Giorgi, have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from various constituency groups whose responses are due to the scene. Alberto Mendoza, I'm a member of the adjunct faculty and I have concerns regarding the proposed reorganization of the campus as it pertains to equity issues. I ask that no changes be implemented until the board has heard the campus concerns from the various constituency groups whose responses are due June 16th. And as I understand it, that June 16th deadline is a part of the established process established through board policy and administrative regulations. I would ask that that process continue and that everybody have the opportunity to express their concerns before anything moves forward. Uh, let's see, I am now to item 11. We have three presentations this evening. The first presentation, 11.1, .1, is the presentation of Measure AB Citizens Oversight Committee Annual Report by Rob Paris, Chair of the Bond Oversight Committee. Hello, I'm actually, this is Kevin. Uh, sorry, I'm who is I'm it? the vice chair. I'm sitting in for Rob today. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Okay. And we need some sound. Uh, is this a little bit better? Oh, oh I was trying to use the, the the microphone. I realized I don't have speakers on this computer, so I have to use headsets. So it worked out perfect anyways. All right. Well, um, pleasure to join you again. I was, I was able to present to you last year as well. Okay, Kevin, if you'll just let me know when you want me to advance. Okay. Um, I don't know that we need to. I think um, you can scroll down some. We did uh, over this last year, we've gone through all of the expenditures and invoices, and we've come up with the same conclusion that the audit did, that there was no uh, expenditures that were outside of what was allowed. Uh, specifically, there was nothing used for teachers or administrator salaries. I think it's just awesome to, to see how much is being completed, to be on the campus and check it out. Um, it's, I just, we're very pleased. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you for your service on the committee. Happy to do it. Outstanding, thank you very much. Okay, you bet, thank you. So we'll move on to 11.2, which is presentation of the annual report of the Retirement Board of Authority, the RBOA. Hello, good evening, board members and members of the public. Um, this is Diana Keelan, uh, Executive Director of Business Services. I'm here to present the annual update of the Retirement Board of um, Authority. And with me, uh, I have Rosalind Washington with Keenan and Associates. Carrie Allison with Morgan Stanley and Scott Rankin with Benefit Trust Company. Um, and together we all oversee the trust that helps fund the other post-employment benefit liability um, as a benefit to our employees and retirees that we have here on campus. Next slide. And I'll let Carrie Allison take it from here and I'll join in a little bit later on. Perfect. Well, thank you, Diana, and, and welcome, everyone. Uh, why don't we uh, jump to the next slide there, if we could. 
Um, <clears throat> this is your retirement board of authority members. These are the folks that we meet with. Scott Rankin is the custodian and the discretionary trustee. Um, I'm with Morgan Stanley. We advise Scott and benefit trusts on the on the portfolio. And then Rosalind Washington is with Keenan Associates uh, in charge of all the administration. She runs the whole program. But these folks right here are the retirement board of authority members. They're the ones that we meet with on a regular basis to overview the portfolio and everything else pertaining to the running of the trust. Next slide, please. Uh, their responsibilities are listed here. Um, high level oversight um, adopts and executes the terms of the trust. The investment policy statement is the statement that that guides and specifies how Scott rank in a benefit trust is to invest your money. So that gets reviewed on a regular basis. These are all Brown Act meetings. Um, of course, there's document due process and you all have the local control. We review the risk tolerance and which portfolio you're in on a regular basis and the committee can change that if they like. Um, and then Futurist is the name of the program. Uh, we've structured this way to mitigate the liability for the district uh, by allowing Scott Rankin the uh, discretion on the portfolio. Next slide, please. Uh, just an overview. Um, uh, we're, we're managing this in compliance with the GASB 74 and 75, and which replace uh, 43 and 45. Uh, these have slightly different uh, 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 slightly different uh, uh, requirements. And so now your portfolio and, and your entire program is being managed according to the 74 and 75 modifications. And this is just an overview of a lot of those modifications. Um, probably don't want me to go into everyone in a lot of detail because there's that's a pretty small print there, but um, some slightly different uh, modifications. Next slide, please. And I had mentioned the team, Keenan Associates is the administrator. Benefit Trust, Scott Rankin, he's the trust attorney, uh, uh, discretionary trustee, and, the, and Benefit Trust, also the custodian. And I'm Kerry Allison. Uh, I, I'm an executive director, been at Morgan Stanley for quite a while. I'm in the Sacramento area. Uh, Scott's out of Kansas City, and uh, Rosalind's down in the Torrance area, Southern Cal. Next slide, please. Uh, this is how the trust uh, has done performance-wise, and and... <laughs> good timing for this meeting because my joke was going to be is that not much has happened this year because you're up about a half a percent for the beginning of the year um but <laughs> it's been quite a ride getting to that point um you started december 31st with a little over 2.73 million um you saw the annual contributions change in market value and you ended on january 31st which was the high month end value of little over $2.741 uh, million. Well, <laughs> believe it or not, as of today's close, you're literally almost exactly that number. So as you know, March and April, or March, which is horrible month, and, and for all the reasons that you know about, but then April and May and so far June have been uh, pretty phenomenal. Why don't you turn to the next page if you could, eight. Um, this, this has the return. So 2019, the account was up 17.67%. And um, I want to talk about a little bit what's going on in the market right now. Uh, you've probably heard that stocks have been doing very well for a couple of months. And some of the commentators were saying, why is the stock market doing so poorly while the economy is doing so poorly? Then on Friday, we got part of the, the reason why that's happening. We got an employment report, where which is the employment report for the prior month, and the department, the estimates on Wall Street were that the market was going to, the economy was going to lose about seven to eight million jobs, seven to eight million jobs. And I'll never say numbers like this again because these are once in a lifetime numbers. So instead of losing the seven to eight million jobs, we gained, gained two and a half million jobs. Um, so about a ten million uh, job swing. And market was up uh, Friday, it was up again today. And that's why your portfolio now uh, is up about a half a percent for the year. Um, go to the next slide, please. Is this yours, Diana, or is this, this is mine? mine. I'll, I'll, I'll take it from here. 
Uh, thank you for that, um, Carrie. Um, so for 2019, um, I'm going to go through our list of accomplishments. Uh, every year we take a look at our investment policy. We make sure that it still fits within the parameters of um, you know, what we would like to see, we evaluate and, and, you know, look at risk and make sure that the return is in line with, with the investment policy piece. Uh, we also uh, rely on Keenan to help uh, provide a written summary of our substantive plan. And basically, that's our plan for assets to be able to, um, in the long term, fund the benefit that we're offering to the retirees. Um, we also are continuing to fund the irrevocable trust in order to lower the liability that we have. Um, we meet, uh, this year we met once annually, that's the minimum requirement. We like to meet twice a year just to make sure that we're discussing um, any issues or concerns that are happening and then also making sure that our uh, uh, charter and uh, bylaws and investment policy are reviewed. Um, this uh, past year, we expanded the Retirement Board of Authority to actually include pension stabilization. Uh, it was first established to uh, cover other post-employment benefits. By definition, other post-employment benefits did not include pension. Um, so the uh, Board of Trustees uh, authorized the Retirement Board to actually start looking at pension stabilization. And basically, it's a similarly set up uh, where you would set up a trust and then um, be able to, in the long term, if there is a kind of current day issue with a recession, you can tap into that pension stabilization to offset the employer obligations for pension and thus lessening the amount that the um, unrestricted fund is paying. Uh, also, again, we had an annual audit and there were zero audit findings. Next slide. And for 2020 uh, goals and objectives, we want to continue to develop and install the management plan. And basically, the management plan is how are you managing that liability? What uh, initiatives are you taking to uh, make sure that that liability doesn't grow? Funding it is, uh, is one point, but containment is another. Um, so that will continue to be part of the discussion is managing the actual benefit itself. Um, also, um, you know, Keenan will again provide a written summary of the substantive plan. We plan to continue to fund it annually and evaluate a future funding plan uh, to be able to uh, address pension. Next slide. So the trust audited um, about 2.2 million. Uh, what you saw previously in the slide was a calendar year look. Our audited financial statements are based on a fiscal year lens. So it would have been through June 30th, 2019. Um, they take a look and make sure that we are following the investment policy, that um, all of the investments are in accordance with what we have established, that we're addressing OPEB compliance. Um, and again, there were no audit findings or recommendations as a result. Next slide. Okay, that's all we have on this presentation. Are there any questions? I think the board is doing an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. All right, we'll move on to 11.3, presentation of the 2020-2021 tentative budget. Hello again, it's uh, Diana Keelan here to present the tentative budget. Um, next slide. So the topics that we're going to be reviewing are the student center funding formula that is still being flushed out up at the state. Um, some of the figures for the 2018-19 recalculation that we just received in February 2020. What our estimated actuals are for 1920 uh, kind of highlight some of the COVID-19 pandemic and the revenue streams and funding streams uh, as a result of that pandemic. Uh, taking a look at the governor's May revision and then moving on to our tentative budget assumptions. Next slide. So for the student-centered funding formula, I keep kind of the three-year lens of what the original plan was just so people can see how this is uh, evolving. Um, so the first year we were at 70-20-10. 
Uh, the goal would be then to move to year three with a 60-20-20 and the 60 would be uh, enrollment. The supplemental grant would be the portion of the student population that are receiving Pell, Promise or that are AB 540 students and the student success initiative grant portion, which is tied to student success through various metrics, number of CTE units, uh, transfer, um, completion, how, how they're considering completion, and then uh, living wage. Um, so some of the updates are in year two, which would have been 1920. They decided to freeze the funding formula at the 70-2010 base. They are doing that again for 2020-2021. So we are still at year one, and we don't know if there's going to be a phased implementation to the 60-2020. So right now it's 70-2010. Uh, they are extending the hold harmless for community colleges to 2023-2024, and that is a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there's also separate rates for non-credit and CDCP, uh, separate rates for incarcerated and special admin. The Oversight Council is continuing to meet and help evolve this funding formula um, for the student success portion. Um, they are now using a three-year average of student success metrics, so that will help take some of the spikes out from, you know, uh, doing really well or years in which, you know, um, student success is kind of falling. So that the three-year moving average helps take those spikes out. Next slide. For a 1920 recalculation, um, we were to receive an increase due to the student-centered funding formula and our population that we serve. Um, there was a lot that happened and um, basically uh, at P2, uh, which was last May, June timeframe, they reverted back to 2017-18 and said you cannot get any more than 8.13% for your 18-19 um, budget. Um, and so we had two scenarios in our adopted budget. The first one was if we were to have to stick to the 1718 as a base plus no more than 8.13%, or if we were to be getting funding for the full implementation of the student-centered funding formula. We budgeted off of the lower conservative figure. Uh, the good news is that they did find funding uh, for the student-centered funding formula. And so we received 6.8 million above what was budgeted. Next slide. So for the estimated actuals, you can kind of see that in the revenue figure, um, 86 million, of course, you know, 6.8 of that is from 1819. Um, so that's just a one-time funding that we will get. Um, we won't be getting 86 million ongoing. It'll be closer to 80 plus COLA. Um, and then uh, if you look, what I wanna spend a little time on is what I'm highly recommending to the board. There's a couple of scenarios that are going on right now up at the state for tentative budget, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, one of them is, you know, what would happen if we don't receive federal funding? If we don't receive federal funding, the picture is pretty uh, bleak um, in the long term. But if we do receive federal funding, that will backfill some of the issues that we're having in the 2020-2021 year. So as a result, what I've put here is the set aside that we have continually built up for categorical salaries and benefits should we have to float positions if those programs are cut. Um, also a reserve set aside for funding the other post-employment benefits. Currently, the district pays about a half a million dollars in PAYGO and we also invest about $387,000. So roughly 900K every year goes to funding the OPIP. If we fully fund it, all of that money would go away and be able to be reinvested into the college. So if we do receive federal funding and that money becomes available, the recommendation is that we fund the OPEB trust. We also have um, an emergency contingency reserve that was allowed per AP 6305 up to 3%. Um, in order to try and stay within our budgeted goals, we're just setting aside a half a million dollars um, um, for, for that. And then that leaves us at about 15.1% within the board goal um, in 6200. Next slide. 
So for the estimated actuals, the overall expenditures for the college are about 215K with revenue being, I'm sorry, 215 million, <laughs> with uh, revenue being at about 265 million. Uh, a lot of those expenditures have to deal, if you notice uh, the restricted program, those are special uh, funds that have to be used for an intended purpose. That's about 24 million. We also have the measure AV bond that's um, moving along nicely. We're estimating to spend about 46 million this year. Uh, and then financial aid, you can see that's about 36.5 million. So that's kind of the makeup of the entire Antelope Valley College budget. Next slide. And this is a very important uh, look because it'll change dramatically uh, if we do not receive federal funding. And I'll show that to you later on. But 84% uh, percent of our general fund revenues come from the state, 10%, uh, which is mainly uh, local uh, property tax and student fees. And the federal side is the title um, three, title five grants that we, that we receive to help support some of those programs. Next slide. For expenditures, you can see that the majority of our um, uh, expenditures, 87% is salaries and benefits related. The other operating costs are things like utilities, attorneys, security, capital expenditures and supplies are very small and other outgo is the funding for um, the other post-employment benefits as well as any return to Title IV funding that we have to uh, give back to the Department of Ed. Next slide. So with the COVID-19 pandemic, it became global in the spring of 2020. California issued a stay at home order with the exception of essential businesses. And the Antelope Valley College responded by migrating to as much online instruction as possible, um, minimal on-campus support and remote work. And we tried to support students the best that we could during that time. Next slide. The funding that we received is the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security CARES Act, which was passed by Congress March 27th. Um, AVC, about a month later, received about 10.2 million, with half of that having to go directly to students for grants. In addition to that, we received Title III, Title IV CARES funding. Uh, because we are a minority serving institution, they did supplement our funding, 635K. Um, to be used for institutional uh, recovery. Uh, we also applied for a FEMA application in April, um, but we have uh, attended several briefings and presentations where they say that we have to use the CARES funding first, and then they will reimburse us up to 75%. Next slide, of eligible expenses. Um, for the student grants, uh, we had several meetings with student services, business services, and information technology. Uh, we even held a town hall with the student body to let them know how we were uh, trying to get the grant funds as quickly as possible in the hands of students. The decision was to make sure that we were taking care of students who demonstrated um, a financial need. And so those students who were Pell recipients received $55 per enrolled credit unit and all other Title IV eligible students received $35 per credit unit. The first disbursement that was issued May 6th, so you know, within a two week period of receiving the funding, we developed a process, had several meetings, and was able to issue 2.5 million, and that's including uh, doing some IT scripting, which was just uh, really everyone working well together. Um, and after that, we had another um, issuance of 400K and then a third disbursement of another 200K. So we have issued 3.1 million of roughly the 5.1 that uh, has to go to students. And so we are now, right now, working through how we get the rest of the um, funding to students for the fall. Next slide. So deferrals, I didn't think I would see this in my lifetime, my work lifetime again, but it looks like it's happening. So May and June, they are deferring payments into the next year, at least that was the plan. Um, and so the portion for AVC is about 8.6 million. Now, because we have been really planning our reserves and building up, uh, we can actually weather that without having to issue a TRAN immediately. Um, the payment schedule for next year won't be known until July. 
And so you'll see a communication uh, for your approval today to at least give authorization that should a tax revenue anticipation note be needed to make sure that we could pay our bills, that we have that available and we can just issue it um, if it's needed. But cash flow projections right now give us about 60 days worth of cash at the end of the fiscal year, even with the deferrals. Next slide. So I won't go too, too much into this. This is the governor's May revision for California. Just roughly there, there's a $53.4 billion shortfall. Um, and this kind of shows the different ways in which uh, the, the revenue has declined 22.3%. Um, unemployment was estimated to go up at 24.5. Um, you know, 4.6 million, we know that that number is significantly larger, have filed unemployment. But just so you guys have a data point in 2010, the peak was 2.2 million. Um, these are, this is a different kind of a recession, uh, nothing that the modern uh, day economy has really seen. And so um, it depends on if how long this uh, recovery is going to be on an L or a U shaped um, kind of uh, economic recovery, but you know, if uh, we can get there quicker, that's great. But to address the shortfall, the governor is using uh, six different strategies, uh, the rainy day fund reserves, some care funding, pulling back new or enhanced programs, using deferrals, um, also um, using uh, 4.5 billion in net operating loss and tax credits, which is about 8% of the shortfall. And he made a point to say that, um, you know, if the HEROES Act does not pass, that there's going to have to be cuts to the tune of 26%. Next slide. For education, the impact is about 19 billion. And so this lists out how the governor plans to address it, CARES funding, um, you know, pulling back some of the planned pension payments uh, using what we said earlier, the um, tax credits, um, 1.6 billion in additional CARES funding for K-14, uh, 1.5 of the general fund um, using the maintenance factor to help supplement that, and then 10% cuts to LCFF. Now that's a K-12 term, but we're kind of estimating something similar. Next slide. So for the unrestricted fund, the um, apportionment is 12% lower for 2020, uh, 2021 than it was for this past year. Um, we did not see significant changes except for deferrals for 2019-20. Um, there is a high probability for further deferrals. So that's why we are planning on a TRAN, um, at least having the ability to issue one if we need to. Uh, again, the hold harmless was extended to 2023-2024. Uh, there's no growth, no COLA and base reductions of 8%. Um, one positive note, though, is that capital outlay, the AVC gym renovation is on the list of approved state projects. Next slide. So there's a lot of uh, uh, categorical fund impacts. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of them. Uh, strong workforce, about half of their funding is being cut. The student equity and achievement program uh, is about 15%, promise 6%, financial aid administration 7% reduction. Again, this is all just the governor's May revision. It has to go through the California legislature before they approve a budget. And we have seen some shifts uh, happen. Uh, Part-time faculty office hours reduced by 27%. Um, and so next slide. Uh, I just highlighted uh, all of those programs. You can continue. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. This is actually an exhibit from a joint analysis that's done um, from the Community College League of California, the Chancellor's Office, um, and Association of Chief Business Officials. They all sit down and take the May revision and they put uh, kind of a 50-page document together. I just put the main table five for your review so you can see the various programs and shifts that they're, that they're making. Next slide. So for our tentative budget, uh, we start with a beginning balance of 19 million, revenues at 73, with a, what we're assuming is a 10% reduction to state uh, revenue. Um, if we can mitigate that or we get additional revenues, that's great, but we are planning the conservative approach. Our expenses are 82 million. And so our ending fund balance leaves us at 12% for 2020, 2021. So that gives us a year to plan. 
on if we need to make additional changes and we'll probably know more uh, by August. Next slide. And so this is the, uh, the expenditures for and revenue for 2020-2021. Uh, uh, you can see 174 million in revenue, 260 in expenses. The big uh, difference here is we're spending about $30 million more in measure AV and we've assumed a 10% increase for uh, financial aid. Next slide. And so this is uh, significantly different. You can see the shifting when you lose 10% of your state revenue, the makeup of revenue shifts a bit. And so uh, we go from what 84% to 78% in state revenue. So our pie is, is changing a bit. Next slide. Expenses are pretty similar to, uh, at least the slices of the pie are pretty similar to 1920. Not, nothing uh, significant there. Next slide. Are there any questions? Diane, could you tell me again how much um, are our total cost and um, salaries, both certificated and classified? I, I missed that number. I'm sorry. It's about 87%. If you go back up, so this is the uh, right here is fine, uh, right there. So you can see here, it's about 80, uh, what, seven per 80, let's see, eight plus nine, 87%. And this is the entire general fund. 36% of that is academic, 22% of that is classified, and then you've got 19% benefits. 77. Okay. Okay, because I, I, that's what I was looking at earlier. I couldn't find where the, the remaining percents were coming from. Okay. Yeah, is sorry. that up or down? Sorry about that, 77%. <laughs> I carried too many ones. Yeah, is that, is that down from what it has been previously? It is actually, usually we hover uh, below 85%, it's like 83%. Um, so, but you, you have to remember the general fund includes the categorical programs as well. And we have some programs like student equity that are not salary and benefit heavy. Uh, basic skills is not salary and benefit heavy. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for catching that. Other questions? Um, I want to thank you for a couple of things. Just first of all, a great report, very informative. Uh, but congratulations on the rapid and efficient dispersal of funds to students out of CARES. I mean, I think you said we've already distributed $3.1 million. And yeah, yeah. I, I, will, I will tell you that is a collective effort um, from student services, ITS and business services. It was really a team effort to get that money quickly in the hands of students. Oh, that's extraordinary. I mean, just well done, everybody. That, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, and I did have just one clarifying question. What kinds of expenses are eligible for reimbursement from FEMA? So um, it would have to be anything that's above and beyond your normal operation. So you can't uh, pay for, you know, um, normal time for people. You can pay for overtime, um, you know, the sanitation efforts, um, you know, anything that's above and beyond our core responsibilities and duties that we had to take on as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The, the, uh, the challenge that we're having is um, whether or not we're going to be able to spend the 5.7 million institutional portion of CARES before we can even tap into the FEMA portion. Yeah, I so, see. That's interesting. Okay. Well, thank you. Are there, if there are no other questions. Okay, thanks again. We will move on. Um, item 12 is a report of closed session action and I have no report today. So we'll move on to item 13, which is the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Advice? Uh, approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the consent agenda passes and we will move on to action items. 
Approval of resolution number 19-20-10 of the Board of Trustees of the Antelope Valley Community College District, authorizing the issuance of 2020-21 tax and revenue anticipation notes, those are trans, and requesting the Board of Supervisors of the Los Angeles of the County of Los Angeles to issue said notes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 14.2, approval of resolution number 19-20-11, declaring commitment to diversity. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. 14.3, approval of the 2020 2021 tentative budget. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Budget passes. 14.4, approval of the 2020-2021 budget for the Associated Student Organization. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 14.5. Approval of the local agreement CSPP 0153 00 for the 2020 2021 with California Department of Education to provide state preschool program to eligible children. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.6. Approval of 2020-2021 Memorandum of Understanding between Palmdale School District Early Childhood Education Programs, Developing a Partnership, the AP, and Antelope Valley Community College. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.7, approval of the district's five-year construction plan. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I'll just say yay. Advice? <laughs> approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.8, approval of Citizens Bond Oversight Committee for Measure AB membership appointments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Approval of additional fees to cover ongoing legal expenses with Donnell Malgoza and Scape LLP for defense of Cal OSHA citations. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1410. Approval of school affiliation agreement between Antelope Valley College and Antelope Valley Hospital from July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2023. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1411. Approval to prepay a three year subscription of SurveyMonkey for survey development software. So move. Second. Any discussion? Advice? <coughs> Approve. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? Motion passes 1412. Approval of contract between Cengage Learning and to go online courses and community services to expand course offerings to include and to go advanced career training online programs. So move. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1413, approval to extend the use of the Foundation for California Community Colleges Cooperative Agreement with SHI International Corporation for the purchase of software reseller services through December 31st, 2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1414, approval of Enlo Valley College District and Career Access Pathways Partnership Agreement for dual enrollment memorandum of understanding, Desert Sands Public Charter. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1415 approval of Antelope Valley College and Career Access Pathways Partnership Agreement for dual enrollment memorandum of understanding with Antelope Valley Learning Academy. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1416, approval of Antelope Valley College District and Career Access Pathways Partnership Agreement for dual enrollment memorandum of understanding with Assurance Learning Academy. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1417, approval to enter into negotiations for student athlete accident insurance coverage. So moved. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1418, approval of amendment to number one to extend the term on the Student Health 101 program agreement with College Health Services for Antelope Valley College students, staff, and faculty members. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. 1419, approval of memorandum of understanding between Antelope Valley College and Penn and Napkin for furnishing shared housing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 1420, approval of memorandum of understanding between Antelope Valley Partners for Health and Antelope Valley College for shared housing wraparound services. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 1421, approval of memorandum of understanding between Antelope Valley College and the Foundation for California Community Colleges, participation with Vision Resource Center project. So moved. Sorry. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1422, approval of agreement with Scion Advisory Services to complete a student housing feasibility study. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 14.23, approval to amend agreement with Deaf Asia Foundation to extend term one year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1424. Approval to enter into an agreement with Life Science, now doing business as Life Science Inc., to provide sign language interpreting for deaf students and faculty for fiscal year 2020 2021. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 1425. Approval of project assignment amendment to Aero Engineering Services for land survey services, Palmdale property on 25th Street East. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes. 1426, approval to purchase lease modulars for the district with cooperative piggyback agreement through Lewis Union School District for purchases through December 2021. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
It passes 1427. Approval to enter into negotiations for lease of modular buildings for swing space phase two project with measure AB funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1428. Approval of insurance program coverage proposal in statewide education wrap up program for infrastructure phase one. Avenue J12 and 30th Street West intersection with measure AB funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1429 approval of change order for Foxfield Improvements Project. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1430, approval of change order for Sage Hall project with measure AB funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1431, approval of change order for security building project with measure AB funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1432 approval of agreements for consultant services, community workforce agreements, Golden State Labor Compliance with Measure AV funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1433. Approval of agreements for consultant services, labor compliance services, Golden State Labor Compliance with Measure AB funds. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1434. Approval of correction to March 9th, 2024, item 1431. Approval of project assignment amendment revision to Ledesma Meyer Construction Company for Construction Management Services, APL Flooring Project 20-007, not Campus Flooring Replacement Phase 2, 20-010. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1435, approval to utilize um, NASPO value point agreement with Snap-on Industrial, a division of IDSC Holdings, LLC, for tools and equipment. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1436, approval to use the Dell Marketing LP Cooperative Agreement through the California Multiple Awards Schedule with Measure AB funds. So second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1437, approval of revision to project assignment amendment to United Hider Inspection Group and testing for geotechnical services. Campus Geotechnical Project Reports with Measure AB Funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1438, approval of revision to project assignment amendment to TTG slash IMEG for land survey services. Campus project surveys from Measure AB Funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I will just direct the board's attention to the information items number 15 and ask if there are any questions or clarifications. No, nope, good to go. Reports and announcements. And before we go to the Office of Superintendent President, I'll read the constituent reports that were provided in advance. Uh, report from Cameron Zapata, uh, ASO Vice President of Club Affairs and President-elect. 
uh, reports that they're having their first meeting on Friday and excited to get the semester started. And a report from Dr. Scott Lee. Uh, Dr. Lee is attending his last meeting tonight as president of the Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers. Dr. Aurora Bird will be taking over as president and she or a designee will be attending future meetings. Dr. Lee will now be the political director of the faculty. And from Diane Nibble. Uh, she has one item to report. The Honorable Michael Deantonovich, who was the LA County Supervisor from 1980 through 2016, um, has provided the foundation a scholarship endowment for foster youth with a generous gift of $79,100. Yeah, great news. And now we will move on to a report from Mr. Kinnison. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Uh, we normally, at our May and June meetings, take time to recognize retirees. And this year, we did have the opportunity to do as it will. We will be bringing you a resolution to recognize all retirees as we have in the past, and that will be at the July meeting. However, tonight I wanted to recognize Mr. Steve Langar, who's uh, 48 years of service to the college, teaching anatomy and physiology. Uh, he is moving on to retirement. With Steve, every best wish for the next phase of his life and thank him deeply for his service to the college. He has truly touched the lives of thousands of students and helped educate most of the nurses in the Antelope Valley. And finally, uh, I'd like to take a moment to uh, recognize Leslie Hazy. This is his uh, final board meeting with us tonight. Uh, after 32 years of service to the college and the community, and Les was always uh, willing to step up and go work in the community and represent the institution in a variety of ways. And this last year, he uh, volunteered uh, his services to assist us in serving as interim vice president of academic affairs. And I uh, want to wish him every best wish for everything in his future as he moves on and tell him how deeply we appreciate his service to the college and the community as well. Very good. Thank you. Uh, board member comments and uh, Juliet, let's start with you. Um, no comments. I'm just happy to starting the summer semester. Excited for what's gonna, what's ahead. Outstanding, and we're happy to have you here. And I'm looking forward to actually being in the same room. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Safe, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. So. Uh, uh, Shall we just go around the table, those games? I don't have a whole lot this evening. I just want to um, thank all of the uh, faculty and uh, also our, our uh, classified staff who are retiring. I want to thank them for their service. And I personally want to thank um, Dr. Yu Hasey. It's been a real pleasure having him step up in that position and I wish uh, all of them the very best in their retirement. And I just wanted to say that uh, at our high school uh, graduation uh, last Thursday, our board president, our student uh, representative uh, is coming to the Antelope Valley College. And all I can say is he's a, he's a doozy. And I can't wait. He's promised me that he's going to one day sit on the uh, be a, a board uh, representative for his uh, for his students. So for, for his colleagues on in the student uh, ASO. So um, I look forward to hopefully uh, welcoming all of them to ABC sometime soon. Thank you. I have nothing. Sarah? I just want to thank Les and Stephen for all years of service to ABC. Campus is just not going to be the same with those two not wandering around. So. Well, I'm again hopeful that this is the last time that we're meeting behind masks and the social distancing will continue. Hopefully, we'll be able to transition to something that feels a little more um, normal, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, thank you to the entire college community for uh, getting us through this. It's been difficult. It's, you know, we're not out of it yet, but I appreciate everybody's work, everybody's commitment to our students and our community. 
And with that, um, I do not have another closed session. So our next meeting is July 13th, and we will adjourn this meeting at 7 p.m.